Hi again, everybody. It's Morgan with Avion Studios for part two of Rubber Grommets. I thought in this one we would just do a simple demonstration of taking a tone bar off, replacing the grommets, and then putting the tone bar back on. So um, here's the same keyboard, and we've got a nasty little E that uh, has really mushroomed out terrible grommets. We've replaced the D, D sharp, and there's that E. It, it, it honestly is one of the weirder sounding notes that I found on this board. And you can see there's a loss of volume, there's a weird kind of uh, raspiness, and there's definitely some vibration in there that shouldn't be there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our drill and we're going to hold the end of the tine bar right here. And the reason that we do this is because we don't want it falling down onto the magnet and potentially breaking the wire that keeps them in series. So here we go with the drill. And I will continue to hold like that and try and get the screws out of the grommets as much as possible and then slide it towards me. You don't want to slide it out this way because you may lose a screw. So there we go, Then we can pop the screws off here. This guy has two screws on the back side here, and so we'll keep those down on the keyboard. And what you're gonna wanna do now is just kinda wiggle these guys out. They are all smashed and dried out and brittle. In fact, that one is crumbling a bit. Uh, here, you can probably see it. Just smash and break all apart. So then, take our drill, the last bit here. There we go. And then the washer, sometimes it's still stuck on there. Pop that off. Now you've got one. And we'll do it for the second one here. Now, if you ever have a bad screw head, uh, one of the benefits, so you can see these smashed guys here, totally destroyed and worthless. Um, Anytime you have a bad screw head, one of the benefits, again, with our rubber grommets is that they will work with a regular fully headed number eight inch and a half stainless steel screw. Uh, so you can get those at any hardware store and it's going to be much less expensive uh, than getting them from somewhere else or some specialty place that has, you know, the bugle thread and they work equally well. So what I do is then I take these guys and I'll just start them on their screws like so. Just like that. And then I'm just going to place them in the tone bar. And because they're such a snug fit, this actually speeds the installation process tremendously. So then I'll just hold this. And then it's going to be a little awkward because I'm trying to hold it for the camera. But and then boom. Normally this goes a little faster because I can apply more pressure. But... I think you guys get the idea. So there we go. Now you have your screws and your grommets seated in the tone bar. Uh, anytime you remove the tone bar, I'll just wipe this away with my finger. Sometimes if there's some crud stuck in the screw hole here, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get in there with maybe another screw or something to kind of work it out, but it seems fine. So uh, we're going to grab our springs again. And in terms of voicing, uh, it's kind of a new ball game when you have new grommets on there. So I'll just replace, I'll kind of forget about this second screw uh, spring that was on there. And I'm just going to do one on each. Uh, just to kind of start fresh uh, with a new, uh, new voicing and then see what's needed. And I talked about kind of the effect of the springs in the other video. So you guys should watch that if you haven't already. And I apologize if it is somewhat boring. But, you know, such is the technical nature of making music on occasion. So, uh, an important thing, what I did was I backed the screw out until I found the thread, and then I went forward, and same with this guy. And then, again, keep holding the front end of your tone bar, and then I usually start with the back screw here, and now I can let it go and it won't fall, and then I'll continue here. And I'll get it till it's pretty close. And then what you're going to want to use, which I also forgot to mention in my first video, is use one of these tine butts, and we're going to set this tine butt right here because that's going to be our gauge. And we're going to screw it down 
like so, and then re-level this like so. And this actually may have a tine that's a little off from the magnet, uh, and it was also, I think, a little more off before because it was squished out. And then the last thing that I will do is I'll kind of lift up here and center this washer, and then I'll push down here and center this one. Uh, it's a slightly anal thing, but again, even press pressure distribution is one of the most important things that the that the grommet should be doing. And uh, you should also, you know, realize that potentially these will be the way that they are for another 20 years. So, with that in place, let's see if we can hear a difference. Look at that. Amazing. That is the sound that you want to hear. And very simple. And everything is lined up nicely. So there you guys go. Uh, oh, just before I forget, I want to go back. We actually finished off the rest of this middle section here. So I wanted to go back to those notes that I demonstrated in the first video to show you guys the difference with the replaced grommets here. Uh, these were replaced and you can see there's no rattle in this D anymore. And then these were the ones that we replaced and we had this really bad uh, G sharp that was unreplaced in the last video. And now it sounds, oh, like a dream, a dream note. Amazing. Just sounds great. And then the last note, um, in doing this middle section, I really noticed something that I hadn't noticed as much with other boards that we've done this on. Uh, but because I know this board so well, because we use it in the studio, uh, it really impressed me, genuinely, with the isolation between the notes playing together. Another added thing, it's kind of a hard thing to demonstrate uh, or to even A and B, uh, but mm, I think the bottom line is this is a, a very worthwhile thing to do to your Fender Rhodes. Uh, there are uh, uh, pretty much no chance that if it's never been done, it doesn't need it by now. So uh, thanks again for watching. This is Morgan again at uh, Avion Studios. Let us know if you have questions. Find us on eBay. Yada, yada, you get the idea. Have fun with your Fender Rhodes.